So first you need a cassette. Let's take spiritual defection out of its box. Yep. Brother Curtis Teague, thank you. <clears throat> All right. So you just want to do this carefully with a tiny Phillips head screwdriver. Unscrew all the screws. All right, part two, making the actual tape loop. Now, I didn't have a tape measure at the time, so I just used the uh, tape measure on the side of my Gerber tool here. So measuring out 9.35 inches or so. One thing about the tape loops, I like to leave uh, a little bit to randomness. They're easier to play if they're looser rather than tighter. Uh, tighter ones tend to break. Looser ones tend to make more abstract noises than just the old tape itself. So cut the tape straight across perpendicular. Nine point three five is the average length for a tape loop of about four or five seconds. And of the standard size that most cassettes can comfortably do. So get your scotch tape. We're going to tape this thing together. You want to trim it down and get all those rough edges off. Now you can see how the tape is folded and curves up. You want to do the side that curves up because it's red on the other side. So hold that down. There's different ways of doing this. I have just started doing it this way to try to have a little less damage to any of the tape. And there you go, one side's taped down. Now I, I can pull that back up and then I'm gonna connect the other side. You want to get it as flush as possible and as straight as possible. That one turned out pretty good. Now to trim that excess tape off the sides. And again, this is just the way I do it. I know people do it lots of other ways. My way is pretty lazy and sloppy. But what I want from tape loops isn't perfection. It's the strange noises, the whooshes, the flutters, and anything else that comes along with old tape. So I'm not really worried about this part in making my own tapes, tape loops that is. So trimming it up, one side done. Doing the second side very carefully. Try not to cut the tape. Although even if you do cut it a little, it's okay. It'll still play. All right, so not perfect. Little tape off each edge, but they usually still play okay like that too. All right, so now we have a tape loop. All right, now we have the tape loop and we're ready to put it into the cassette housing. I like to use the small tools for this. A flathead screwdriver is real handy. 
and then you already have the Phillips there so you can use that two-point coordination there or you can use your hands if you're more steady than I am uh, I find it easier to do this without the larger spindles in the middle but some people do it with one on you'll figure out the way that works best for you the more you experiment with them loading it up so that it lies flat in the front tighten it up and now making sure the tape is all the way in and now we can start adding the larger spindles Whoa, that one's going to be too big let's try the smaller one so let's use the smaller spindle two of the same size and let's see if we can get this wrapped around two of those poles sticking up or one of them and have our loop just a little bit longer than the usual then nope not gonna make it for both poles but I bet we can get one All right, the bottom pole is in. Okay, we got our tape loop in the cassette housing. All right, final part is putting the top piece back on very carefully. Take your time. Make sure the tape on the front isn't getting crushed or bitten this one went in really nicely first try you can see it's nice and smooth nothing got crunched so now sit it down gently and put your screws in Thank you. 
Thank you.